your father's personal logs. Amazing how life can change in an instant. Suddenly my career doesn't matter. This incredible woman I've been married to all these years. She's facing the end. All I think about are the times I wasn't there for her. Well, that's going to change. It occurs to me that Sam might be more than I ever imagined. Not a ton to go for there. Are we are we updating the AI technology codex over and over again, or does it keep coming back? Now I'm curious. Technology. Tech and biotics? No, it's a return to this crappy system where the moment you highlight stuff it marks it as being red, which means that you can't it means that you can't uh keep track actively of which ones you have and haven't read so far. And now that I'm looking here I'm sitting here looking for AI and in the process I'm like marking everything as red that gets in my way. I thought it was I thought they said technology. AI technology, right? The journey far so far. Rider. Ties that bind. That's basic though, it's just saying you still are you still mourn people, it's fine. Pathfinders. That's kind of a few things. Let's be clear about what my exact role is here. Pathfinders are the tip of the spear for exploring new worlds. While planetary surveying is typically a long-term multi-team process, the initiative found an alternative. Thanks to Alec Ryder's AI research, an individual equipped with the best training and technology available, and an AI partner that can run complex studies in seconds and 100 test simulations a minute. With AI support, Pathfinders can determine within hours whether a planet is suitable for habitation and direct the, the Nexus as to what colonists block stands the best chance there. Couldn't you just send a dr drone? How I understand the part where, you need, where AI would help, but why does the Pathfinder help? Can't you just send like a drone in real quick? Then you don't have to send in an entire shuttle with like a person in it that what, it takes way more fuel and takes way longer because it has to not kill the person inside of it as opposed to like just sending a little drone down there that's like just gonna scan the planet and figure out if humans can survive on it and stuff huh pathfinders are trained to improve the viability of potential planets initiate first contact with unknown species find suitable outpost sites and handle any external threats before the first colonist touches soil the presence of a pathfinder is a uh, reassurance that a planet can be settled safely and with a high expectation of success. Okay, so Pathfinders check a planet for viability and make first contact with aliens. N what made what part of this made me part of the branch of the, the uh, judiciary? I was able to reopen a closed criminal case and potential, and I'm tr going to affect the outcome of it. What does that have to do with being a Pathfinder? Why am I allowed to do that? Implants. The first Pathfinder neural implant we created by Dr. Ellen Ryder, a pioneer in human biotic implant design. While biotic implants bolster and focus electrical signals along the nervous system, Pathfinder implants go a step further by connecting not to not only the nervous system, but circulation, endocrine function, and exteroceptive... Extero... It's a hell of a word. Exteroceptive senses. Uh, synced with an artificial intelligence, the implants reveal their full potential. The implant is a two-way connection, giving me full insight. We're, we're, we're writing these, apparently these codex entries are in first person. Giving me full insight into my host's physical and mental state. Oh, sorry, the first person from the perspective of, from, of Sam. Okay. Giving me full insight of my, into my host's physical and mental state while allowing me to generate and alter electrical signals along my host's neural pathways that the body processes as its own. In a crisis, I can adjust a Pathfinder's balance, improve reaction time or muscle memory, or bolster bi uh, biotic abilities. Quantum computing allows me to implement changes faster than synapses can fire. The main challenge for the Pathfinder implant was miniaturizing a QEC device and enough to fit a neural implant. This... Connection uh, helps uh, keeps me in constant sync with my host. So, with quantum computing, you you can apparently implement changes faster than any synapses can fire. So then, why do I need profiles in the first place? Why can't you just power up whatever action I'm, I'm about to take, no matter what the action is, regardless? And I don't need profiles in the first place because the the concept of profile seems kind of pointless if you can always act faster than I can. Just just 
just boost the thing I'm about to do all the time for the entire game. AI partners. Pathfinders are highly skilled explorers, scientists, and soldiers. And apparently lawyers? And CSI agents. From what we've seen so far. And investigators? Yeah, we're doing a lot of criminal investigation so far. Did they forget what their own premise of a Pathfinder was? I don't know. But when partnered with the quantum competing power of an artificial intelligence, they became indispensable. Developed by Alec Ryder, My Matrix was the pattern for multiple SAM interactions intended to partner with the Pathfinder, each traveling on their respective arcs. The nature of artificial intelligence means that hosting each SAM iteration on different hardware causes multiple tiny variations. This results in unique individuals who are similar but fundamentally different to myself. Partnership with a Pathfinder allows continued development and increased empathy with organic individuals. Pathfinders go through extensive psychological training before being linked with an AI partner, allowing full root access to an AI without sufficient, prepara without sufficient preparation can result in unexpected and unwelcome side effects. However, those who are prepared the sync fully, uh, and sync fully with their SAM are capable of extraordinary feats, which is why this technology is never mentioned in the entire Mass Effect trilogy. Ooh, we have a lot of characters we can read about if we want to. I like how... Uh, Sarah and Alec Ryder are characters wear, uh, wearing armor because we, we don't know what their faces look like enough for a, a screenshot to be taken. I should probably read about these people that are I like my own character. Born on Earth in 2129, Alec Ryder says his love of New Frontiers was fostered by a childhood in the Sierra Nevadas. Oh, so he grew up like right next to me. <laughs> According to his service record, he joined the Alliance military and was eventually assigned to John Grissom's historic expedition through the, Ch the Charon Relay. His experience made him a candidate for what would be later known as N7 training back on Earth, where he met Dr. Ellen Harlow. Oh, that's my dad, isn't it? Whoops, my bad. I I named him a character Atlas, my mistake. What? Oh, right, because we, we, we don't know what his face looks like because he's, he's based on Sarah and Atlas. Uh, his experiences made him a, uh, a candidate for what would later be known as N7 training back on Earth, where he met Dr. Ellen Harlow. After his marriage, Alec continued military service, most notably in Shangxi on the First Contact War against the Turians. Assigned as a military attache to the Citadel in the late 2160s, Alec became interested in artificial intelligence as a mean of human advancement. His pursuit of this illegal technology led to a dishonorable discharge from the Alliance military. Contacted by the Andromeda Initiative, Alex, Alec found a sponsor to help complete his work. I am the product of that research, assisting not only the Initiative, but Alec's new role as a Pathfinder. Soon after our arrival on Andromeda in 2819, Alec Ryder died during operations on Habitat 7. This is the wife? Yeah. So let's find out how she died then. Ellen Ryder, formerly Harlow, was a pioneering designer of biotic implants. In 2150, she was leading a biomedical and cybernetic research sir, at UFRJ in Rio de Janeiro. When human biotics began to emerge as a scientific field, Ellen found possible applications for her work in neurointegrated wet wetware. Her early designs for biotic implants formed the framework for later L2 and L3 models. Ellen made, uh, met Alec Ryder when he was posted to Rio for ICT N7 training before the first contact war. She eventually joined Alec on the Citadel, where he was posted there as a military attaché and given birth to fraternal twins on the station 2163. Unfortunately, Ezo, the catalyst for biotic mutations, is a hazardous material. Poorly understood in the early years of human biotics, after repeated accidental exposures, Ellen eventually developed a terminal neurodegenerative dis disorder, later known as AEND. Why were you getting killed by Ezo? Did you not ask, like, the Asari and Salarians about, like, how to contain Ezo? Because at this point you would have... Well... I don't know what the timeline is. I don't know if this was how, where this go, falls with the first contact war versus her research and so on. But it seems like you'd want to you want to know how to not get killed by this weird unknown material. In her final years, Ellen Ryder built what would later become the Pathfinder implants, designed to sync with the AI partner Alec Ryder was developing. 
uh, Ellen died before my creation was fully realized. Then we got our sister. Born your elder twin on the Citadel space station in 2163, Sarah grew up surrounded by a multitude of alien species, cultures, and histories. In her orientation interview, she claims she, this sparked her fascination with science. With informal training, aided by Alec Ryder's N7 background, Sarah joined the Systems Alliance military, which was continuing its, re its search for protein technology after successful discoveries on Mars. Initially assigned to peacekeeping duties, Sarah was approached to serve a support role for these protein researchers. She often describes the thrill of serving with scientists like Matthias Silva on the brink of the next great discovery. When Alec Ryder was dishonorably discharged due to his AI research, internal memos showed that this also effectively ended Sarah's career, but Andromeda presented the kind of scientific frontier she had sought all her life. On arrival in Andromeda, Sarah's cryopod was damaged and her revival process interrupted. Dr. Lexi Tapero advised keeping her in a medical-induced coma to allow her to awaken naturally. So the dad really made a mess for his children, didn't he? Tearing down his child's career. We don't have background for my character, probably because it would, it would probably interfere with attempts at role-playing or something like that, if they gave me too much. All right, so we're looking for we're looking for triggers. Nothing else is new. Let's scroll through here to make these go away. Nope, not this time. How do I make the exclamation point go away? Ah! Oh, it wasn't there. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I was looking at the wrong tab. <laughs> Welp. I think it's time to go to our ship at long last. Okay, so it's not being continually updated. It just does it go? Does it happen when I open my journal? Okay, not that time. Oh, there it is again. Technology. Artificial intelligence. I'm not crazy. It is showing up over and over again. I thought maybe the codex was being uh, updated over and over again by all of my interactions with that room, but now I think that it's just sort of happening how it do. Ah, you do have a decent number of options here I need to keep track of. So we have operations, cryo bay, and docking bay are all available separately. Okay, I gotta keep, I gotta keep track of that. I, th I was... I totally thought I was just running over here and just activating the elevator over and over again. Or tram. Let's check out my sister. I'll make it right, Dash. I promise. Pathfinder, I'm Nigel McCoy. Just got out of cryo. Welcome to Andromeda, Nigel. Thank you. It's bittersweet, though. My little brother Dash was stationed on the Nexus. I just learned he died on Eos, trying to start a settlement. Yeah, sorry about that. We were too stupid to come to the Nexus and, you know, gain intel about the planet below us. So instead we went on a blind mission and a bunch of people died. Because the previous Pathfinder was kind of a jackass. Which is weird because he was smart enough to create AI technology. But dumb enough, despite all the pl he has all the pre-planning in the world to get us this far. But seemed to have really bad decisions after that point. His sacrifice won't be forgotten. Agreed. Everything I do will be for him. I have a pendant to our father war. Dash had its match. Will you... Reunite them? Of course. In his digital journal, he mentioned a spot on Eos where he'd go to think. If you could leave the pendant there. In his digital journal, he mentioned a spot on Eos where he would go to think. What? How long was he on Eos? It seemed like we were only there for a few hours and everything went to shit and then we came back. Like, I... How, when when did he have time to get at home enough on Eos to have a place to th think that he goes better. to? Looks like... Fisher, glad to see you're doing better. That was some expedition, hey? Captain said I'm going in the log as the first human to make contact with the cat. And Kirkland's the first casualty. Wish it could have gone differently. I'm sure there are decent aliens here in Andromeda, too. We just have to find them. Well, I heard you're Pathfinder now. The sooner you figure out where they're hiding, the better. Will do. Chin up. I would say that due to elements of the Fermi Paradox and stuff like that, or if that's, if that's even the right thing to cite here, 
Our chances of finding other aliens seems low, but we already found these aliens, so I guess we're batting a thousand so far, so who knows. I just, I'm just curious to see if this galaxy has any equivalent of the Mass Effect relays, because the chance of f encountering aliens without that kind of network seems tough. Ryder, good to see you. Damn shame about your dad, though. I'm sorry we couldn't save him. I haven't heard how he died. Like a hero. That's how. That's the only part that matters. I've met one Pathfinder, well, two with you. But I figure that's the way to go, taking your last breath on an uncharted world. Yeah, sounds about right. Now I just need to make sure your sister here pulls through. So the ideal way for a Pathfinder to die is to fail to, to chart their world. <laughs> and the only way to make, make it stay uncharted. So how is she? How's Sarah doing? Her condition's stable. I see signs of REM activity in the brain, so she's dreaming. Means all the wiring still works. How'd this happen? It was dumb luck, really. We hit the scourge at the worst possible moment, just as the stasis revival was kicking in. It's a vulnerable moment, coming out of a 600-year nap, then wham! The circuits fried and overloaded the neural pathways. Don't worry, I'm on it. We're not losing another rider. Are you staying here on the Hyperion? You know that moment when you realize you're just getting too old? Uh... Ha, <laughs> right, look who I'm talking to. Trust me, it happens. For me, it was Habitat 7. Watching you guys running around, dodging lightning and the cat, it's a young man's game. Pains me to admit it, but it's passed me by. What will you do here besides, you know, over oversee my, my sister's not death? What will you do on the Hyperion? We still have thousands of people taking a nap here, and they need tending to. And this way I can look out for Sarah. How did you end up with the initiative? Well, you reach a point in life where you wonder, is that all there is? I'd accomplished everything in the Milky Way I could. I was locked into a future of diminishing returns. So coming here was the world's biggest midlife crisis chance to wake up in the morning and feel hope instead of arthritis. That's all, Harry. Thanks. Don't be a stranger. If anything changes with Sarah, I'll let you know. I definitely have trouble accepting the idea that he couldn't possibly accomplish anything else in the Milky Way, Milky Way but I totally buy his explanation of it being a midlife crisis. Is that Sarah? Looks like it. I think that's Sarah. Hopefully she lasts. Wouldn't want to customize the character and then have them die off camera or something. Ryder. Hayes, how's the wound? Doc says I'll live. So this goes from a life-threatening gunshot to a story I'll tell my grandkids someday. With no need to exaggerate. That was a tough fight on Habitat 7. <laughs> Just glad to be on the other side of it. Greer, how are you feeling? Grateful. If you and Liam hadn't found me in that cave, God knows what those aliens would have done. We couldn't leave a man behind. Yeah, your father, and Kirkland. We'll never forget their sacrifice. It's a brave thing, risking your life for the greater good. Yeah, it just seems unfair. We barely got here. I'm sorry I'm not out there with you, but... Kirkland was a friend, and I'm not cut out for this anymore. Understood. Habitat 7 was a nasty wake-up call. You take care, Greer. You too. And thanks again. People are having some buyer's remorse here. They came all this way and dedicated so much to the cause, and then one day in, they panic and are getting out and like, maybe this was all a mistake after all. So this lady here in the red doesn't have any other animations, so she she can only check her Omni tool over and over again. So it's leading to the exact animation playing on a loop over and over again. Oh look, my character's doing it now. Whoa, Omni tools look like they burn your eyes now. They're super bright. That's not Sarah, right? It's Sarah that's on the bed, right? 
It's hard to say off the bat because they're made in the character creator, so they could they could end up looking like a lot of different characters. Thankfully, that door opens in advance, so when I charge at it full force, I don't slam my face into it. Right, let's double check operations, just because I'm I need to get familiar with all these locations are. Oh, looks looks like there's something going on over here. Let's take a look. Nexus Operations. I need to learn to tell these places apart. I totally went between two different versions of Nexus locations, and it didn't even click for me that I was in different places. Oh, the question mark's gone. Wait, I'm just back here? Why was there a question mark a second ago? Am I crazy? So we are back here then. Okay. That was... That was peculiar. If I go back here, does that question mark show up again? Let's double check. Nope, I'm just crazy. Alright, well now I know. Alright, goodbye forever, Addison. Probably not forever, but... Hopefully for a while. Docking bay. Pathfinder en route. How's the ship? In final checks, looking great. We won't be long. The way things are going, we'll be on our own out there. In other words, we're making this up as we go. <laughs> we used to call that tactical improvisation. But at least we'll be doing it in style. They call her the Tempest. Let's go take a closer look. Let's pick it up a bit, people. We're 14 months late. So you're the one who's making everything happen. Vetra. Vetra Nix. Initiative Wrangler, Provisioner, Gunner, and everything in between. Are we ready? The sooner we get out of here, the better. You're coming with us? Yes. Otherwise, there's no way they're letting this ship off the station. What's the rush? Just don't want to waste any more time. Hold it, hold it! You're not going anywhere. Damn it. Is something wrong? Director Addison wants to see a complete report of the Tempest's supplies, munitions, and crew. Director Tan overruled Addison. The ship's loaded out with equipment for outpost discovery, squarely under Director Addison's purview. Seen you around. Ben, right? Came here with the family, didn't you? Son still in cryo? I could pull some strings, get him to the front of the line. Really? Yeah, really. They told me he wasn't essential. But I miss him. I know. I got family too, Ben. It's done. <sighs> Addison's gonna kill me. Nicely done. Part of the job, Pathfinder. All things considered, it was an easy ask. And right now, you need people tearing down obstacles, not putting up more. Finally, someone who cares about doing stuff and not just talking about it. Everything's state of the art. Labs, sensors, exploration gear. Plus her crew, of course. The best in their field. Ah, glad to see you looking well.
The engine core is based on the Ark's Odyssey drive. It runs a hell of a lot quieter. That's Gil Brody. Engineer, mechanic, all-around wrench jockey. We call this the research room. There's space for upgrading equipment, gathering intel. Router engaged. Securing connection to Tempest. Welcome aboard, Sam. And Ryder, of course. All run by Suvi Anwar, our science officer. Your quarters are below. Plenty of space up here to get everyone together. It's all yours. She's light, stealthy, and the fastest ship in her class. <sighs> it's really gonna be something, isn't it? I haven't even shown you the best part. When you're ready to fly, head over to the bridge. Our pilot should have everything good to go. Better head to the bridge when we're ready to go. We got ourselves another Normandy in a way. Alright. Yeah, it's multi-floor. That's one way to make things feel a little different. Like, this is the first one with multiple floors that we can actually see from one to the other, as opposed to the, uh... Was it the... Actually, the S Normandy SR1, I believe, that you take ramps between floors at the, for some of the floor transitions, but they were isolated hallways, so you couldn't see around... This is actually a really big, spacious area. It actually doesn't look like a ship at all from this view. It looks, it looks like I'm on a stationary building, but then you can kind of see the nose... Yeah, you can see the nose sticking out the front over there, which seals the deal on how big this thing is. It's actually really big, yeah. So, important thing about that's different about this ship is the Tempest has a dock... It has, it has a, a ramp, a loading ramp on the bottom. It sets it apart from the... I don't think Normandy ever had a loading ramp. I could be misremembering, but... uh. An important difference there is Normandy was built to dock at ports. But that that's not going to fit here. We're supposed to be doing uncharted Meeting space. Room. You can make vid calls from the central table or just get the crew together. So we need the ability to uh, out, to uh, actually load and unload directly on the ground below the ship. And that's, that's just different from how ships are really generally designed. No calls available this time. Not even the not even the semblance. No context list here. We need to go make friends first in space. So this top area seems like it's all dead ends for now. No interactions. You can see all the way out into the docking area. I think they're showing off. Because <laughs> in Mass Effect 1 you could never do something like this because the game would lose its goddamn mind trying to load the ship and everything outside the ship. But this is made for later consoles and of course PC. Where everything's possible until it's not until it's we call this the research room You can run research projects and coordinate with the Nexus from here uh, Vetra you already told me that like like a minute ago like almost verbatim That's the bio lab we can grow plants for food and oxygen and keep any specimen safe And on my and from my perspective I can do nothing What's down there? Little floating face with purple below it? What is that? Not sure what to make of the artwork. Got a bunch of floating rings. I am similarly unsure of what I'm looking at anywhere in here, really. I'm sure that something will show up in here as I find it. Hey Liam, welcome Hello, to the fun. crew. Check this toy. What's this toy? Seems like we're forever racing. But there's always time to check out new toys. Useful ones. Always game for new toys. This makes use of old ones. Like anything you grabbed on Habitat 7. Raw minerals, tech, doesn't matter. The research station will strip that stuff down and give you options. We're on our own, for everybody else. That's what Pathfinder means now. Yeah, well, everybody should be so lucky. This tech is aces. If the best we get is what we make, Still the best. Check it out. Select research to unlock new blueprints and augments by respending research data. Okay, so I can go for research or development. Research? Uh, development. Select development to craft equipment and nomad upgrades using blueprints you've researched. So first research, then develop. So I guess I, sh I should check what I already have access to. Okay, so we have... A basic of each weapon type, two different assault uh, rifle types, two different pistol types. 
development. Press X to learn more about the materials uh, required to craft each blueprint. Visit the research screen to unlock new blueprints. So we are immediately low on resources. Okay. We're we're immediately uh, needing to get our own resources for everything we develop here. We use Ezo to make a pistol, huh? Okay, so I actually have everything required for this stuff. Uh, what do these mean, things mean, though? Omnigel canister? So Omnigel is now a crafting material. Iron, cadmium, and Ezo. And I have all of those things right now. I have way more than enough Omnigel in particular. So I could craft all sorts of things here if I want to. Presumably I'd want to actually compare them too, though. So like, Avenger Assault Rifle, that's 30 damage. 56 damage. If I want to view details, can I compare it? Compare with the right stick. Compare to my charger. So more damage, less of a whole lot of other things. Good accuracy. For someone that likes to take pot shots, probably a good choice. So my choices are seven weapons. Not a whole lot of anything else. No, I do have... I do have, uh... I have armor variants I can go for if I want to, but I need beryllium, uranium, platinum, titanium, and so on for different items. Okay, how the how are their stats looking though? Is this just standard? I think it is. This gives you three percent weapon, uh, headshot, and weak point bonus. Some bonus spare ammo. Also, it looks ridiculous. <laughs> Pathfinder helmet, a little bit of damage resistance, a little bit of accuracy. There's even unknown categories. Okay. Let's look at research. Augmentations. Uh, each research category has different research data. RD. Milky Way, Helios, and Remnant. Switch categories with, with the bumpers. Okay. Uh, select a br uh, blueprint or augment and hit A to research it. Sure. There's Helios and there's Milky Way. Okay. And I need to res- wait. How does one research Milky Way technology from Andromeda? Surely we just already have all of our Milky Way technology researched, and then I can develop it, right? And I research stuff that's... Uh, whatever. <laughs> so, grenade launcher. Add a, each projectile fired is now a grenade. It just turns your weapon into a grenade launcher. It costs 200 research data. I have enough research data for nothing, even the most basic stuff. Let's see. Put on your arms to give you 35% tech damage, that's pretty good. Combat damage, 35% biotic damage, aerial stabilizer. Okay. So adding this to arms would be really effective then. Same thing down here. They're just different variations. Each one's got its own specific thing. Plasma charge system fires direct line explosive plasma bolts. They also get shock... They have a different uh, variant for shotguns compared to every other weapon type. Battlefield assist module. When weapon and... and when health and shields are full, 20% bonus damage. When they're 20% or lower, 25% uh, bonus resistance to all damage. There's a few variants here and there. Then you have unknown... Armor types. I assume that there's so there's no that that's all four pieces. See, so we have uh, four armor slots of the Hyper Guardian set and the N7 set, and you can give them a linear progression. So the N7 set gives you health. Sorry, it gives you shields and biotic power. Is that a true across the? It is true across the board, isn't it? Even recharge. Neat. What is the Hyper Guardian? More, it gives you more uh, health and shields, but also bonus melee damage. So the chest piece is 20, 10, 30. This chest piece is 10, 8, 15. Okay. So this gives you shields and biotics, whereas this one gives you health and uh, health and shields and at much, at much larger amounts. So the Hyper Guardian set is a tank set, and 7 set is a biotic set, or at least within the realms of what we have to compare it against so far. Is there any... They're all weapons, huh? Okay. Krogan Hammer and Asari Sword. Those mix things up. Why is the Asari Sword just just a katana-looking weapon? Okay. 
I was just I was I wanted to see if there was if there was Omni Tool or Amps, like in uh, Mass Effect One. But it looks like Omni Tools and Amps are long since gone from the franchise as equipment items. All right, so right now I mostly want to wait for more research to be available. It's a research center. What's this over here? Strike team missions. Well, time has passed, so I can send somebody out again. Let's see. Awaiting debrief. Debrief. It was successful. We get 8,400 experience. Some mission funds and some loot boxes. How about you? 8,800 experience and the same. Okay. Might as well just send people out wherever I can, right? If I think it'll work out. 70% chance of success. Unfortunately, the experience is for them and not for me. Let's see, should, is there a... I could check for better ch success chances if they... Okay, there's 78, that's a little better. Because the better the success chance, the more likely I am to actually get my reward I'm, I'm going for in the first place. 25. So some of my success chances are kind of garbage. We'll, we'll go with the 70 then. But what about my rewards? Uh, loot box. Credits, common. Credits, common. Okay. Does it not say how many credits you got, or brillium? Oh. Renderable plates. Interesting. And with more funds, I could recruit another one. Will it say what I got when I exit this menu? Strike team ready for deployment. There it is. Ooh, 20... like 20 credits. Compared to my 1600. So these starting strike team missions are pretty low impact. Still, I'm, I'm alarmed that I was able to send people... I haven't even been on the planet yet, and I'm already sending people on strike missions. Seems risky. So what's our map look like? We got one long deck here. Circular deck up top. One small negligible room, so I can already write that off for now as far as exploring the deck goes. Next floor down is rather extensive too, so let's avoid going down while I try to tell where the hell I'm going. So is this my way down? Oh, there's even an elevator midway through. Okay. Is that a Mass Effect core? Oh yeah. Familiar sight. Hey. Let's avoid going that way for a little bit to take a look around. Our tech lab is an engineer's dream. It's perfect for any delicate technical work. Okay. We'll see if I ever get to interact with these spots or if I just use that one terminal in the other room. They're using a mask? That's one of our helmets, right? Why is it in a isolation chamber? For Maybe it's for hazard testing? Hey. What is this, a light? Oh, it's just a bridge. Huh. You don't believe but you don't believe in safety rails on this ship, do you? Just gonna say, like, what if the inertial dampeners fail for a bit? We get roughed up a bit, take some bad hits. These people just go careening off these ledges. Maybe it was a good idea not to have balconies on the Normandy. 